These are the top abacus experts in Japan. The first game is flash mental calculation. The contestants must add the numbers that appear on screen within a limited amount of time. This was only the practice. It's an amazing feat of mental acumen. Here's the first question. All of these people have the answer. They exchange their answer with their neighbor in order to confirm it. This continues until there's only one remaining contestant. The time limit slowly shrinks along with the number of people who have the answer. The numbers pass by almost too quickly to read. Now only five contestants remain. They gather at the center for the final contest. The numbers disappear in the blink of an eye. Four people have the correct answer, with one contestant being eliminated. Mental arithmetic is faster than using a calculator. This is a completely different world than the world of calculators. They seem excited as they exchange their answers. This is the last man standing. It's Sasano Takeo, an abacus teacher. This is a personal best for him. もう
それで瞬間的に数字がそのままそろばの球に移ってもうその瞬間的に足していくような感じですね。はい。He keeps adding numbers, so he has an abacus in his head. There was a time when abacuses were used like computers. Interestingly, the decline of abacuses is related to the birth of a single number. Puri is a small city located near the Bay of Bengal in eastern India, with a population of 150,000. Every July, the city comes to life. People walk and ride for days in order to reach Puri. To many of the pilgrims, visiting the city is the wish of a lifetime. They are here for the Rath Yatra festival, the festival of carts. The rain doesn't seem to phase them at all. There are some 300 million gods in this country of 1.2 billion people. This cart is at the center of the festival. It is called a rath in Sanskrit. The people come here in order to participate in the journey of this cart. The cart has 16 wheels with a diameter of three meters. It is a symbol of the endless cycle of existence and non-existence that rules the cosmos. Merely touching the cart is the equivalent of years of asceticism. They consider life to be like the single moment that the wheel touches the ground as it rotates. What gave rise to such a philosophy? This is a boarding school where the entire class lives and studies together. It is a school dedicated exclusively to students of the Brahmin class. This is a country ruled by the caste system, a stringent class system, and the Brahmin are the priests, the highest class of society. There is something else that differentiates this school from others. There are no books. All knowledge here is transmitted orally. 
Because every bit of knowledge has to be memorized, it is set to meters and rhythms which add beauty and simplicity to the ancient texts. In short, they become works of poetry. Mathematics is also taught through poetry. This is the Atharva Veda, one of the sacred texts which teaches mathematics. Even the math problems here are in the form of poetry. There were two lovers. As they were making love, a pearl necklace broke. A third of the pearls fell on the ground. A fifth fell on the bed. A sixth on the woman. A tenth on her lover. And there were six still on the string. How many pearls did the necklace have in all? Things were different in other civilizations that were around during that time. There is a very ancient book of math problems here. Inside are math problems which had practical applications in life in ancient Egypt. On the text are numbers that were in use then. One, two, three. Each additional stick indicated the next number. for the larger numbers. A lotus meant 1,000 and a rope meant 100. And finally, two small sticks indicating two. The number is 2,302. It remains 2,302, no matter what the sequence is. While the Egyptians wrote numbers on papyruses, another civilization wrote them on clay tablets. These tablets, both of these tablets, are from the old Babylonian period, probably from what is now called southern Iraq. It was part of Mesopotamia at the time. They are from about 18 to 1700 BC. This is another book of math problems. These numbers resemble wedges and are thus named cuneiform for cuneus, the Latin for wedge. I'm going to write, I'm going to write five. How's that? No, I'm going to write 15, okay. And I will write another number, two. 
and then down below I'm going to write that that's 17. How's that? That's nice. One. Two. Three. In Babylon 2, each additional wedge created the next number. What do numbers look like in this country where knowledge is transmitted orally? From one to nine, the numbers all look different. So, how do they write the larger numbers? This is accomplished through the nine numbers. Nine thousand four hundred thirty-nine. They use the same numbers for each different unit. In this land of poetry, where all knowledge had to be memorized, the most important thing was speed and convenience. Beauty was also important. When they read 9,439, they would add the unit to each number. Nine Sahasra, four Siata, three Tasha, nine. But this method of reading numbers was not efficient enough. Three nine eight three. They began to read the numbers without the units, much in the same way we read phone numbers. But soon, they met with a problem. They had to read numbers where a unit was zero, so they read them with pauses. Six three seven two. Six three seven two, six three seven two, six three seven two. This led to confusion, and they felt the need to read the pauses as well. So they created a word in order to indicate the pauses. Shunya. That word is sunya. It means pause and nothing. It also means sky, air, and space. The square is full of people singing and playing tambourines and trumpets. There is a sunya in the cart's journey as well. People crane their necks and stand on tiptoe in order to get a glimpse of the gods. Jagannath, the Hindu lord of the universe, appears. The god does not sit alone on a pedestal. Instead, he can always be found amongst the people. They put the black-faced god on a cart. Along with his brothers and sisters, Jagannath journeys to his summer home once a year. Jagannath! 
this is no mere festival. It is part of life, part of the mass subconscious which has taken root here millennia ago. Only Brahmin are allowed to ride on the carts. The final destination is a temple where the three gods once resided. People struggle for the privilege of pulling the carts. The carts begin to move, and the giant wheels rotate like the cosmos as it moves from existence to nothingness, and then nothingness to existence. There is no such thing as beginnings or endings. The cosmos repeats an endless cycle of birth and death. The wheels of the cart have no beginnings or endings either. They turn endlessly on the road of life. This is the way these people make peace with the endless trials and tribulations which is life. Sunya or Zero, call it what you may. But for these people, it is part of the endless cycle of the universe. And it is this that the pilgrims realize as they follow the cart. One mathematician realized the value of zero. Indian mathematicians started questioning what, how do you do mathematics with this zero, this idea of nothing. Throughout many Eastern cultures, the idea of uh, nothing is samsara, the idea of embracing the void, um, is something to be uh, worked towards rather than something to be rejected. And so I think that the philosophical embrace of the void in the East made it easier for mathematicians to realize that nothingness, zero, was actually something that had value, that it was uh, a mathematical concept that you could actually work with and use. What is nothing in the eyes of a mathematician? Does nothing exist? Sunya is the Indian answer to this question. Zero is the number where existence and nothingness meet. Zero reconciled these paradoxical concepts which seemed to be polar opposites of one another. When nothing is recognized, Sunya becomes a number. Brahma Gupta used zero like any other number. He added and subtracted to it. He used zero as part of his calculations. A person's estate added to his debt equals zero. Adding zero to the person's estate equals the person's estate. Subtracting the person's estate from the person's estate results in zero.
The use of zero was a grand innovation in mathematics. Let's take a look at zero in action. You'll remember the question of pearls from the Atarva Veda. It's actually an equation. The number of lost pearls equals x. So, the number of all the pearls put together equals x. By solving this equation, we can figure out the number of pearls. But the equation would be impossible to solve without zero. This is because transposition absolutely requires zero. There are 30 pearls in all. The zero completes the equation. Numbers seem prosaic. They seem to be dull and ordinary, but they are full of religion and philosophy. All Hindus must bathe in this river at least once in their lives. This sense of sacred devotion can be found in the profound philosophy that lies behind the number zero. Now, zero embarks on a long journey from its birthplace in India to lands foreign and far away. From India, it travels through Arabia and arrives in Europe. It was a time when the Roman Church ruled over much of Europe. At the time, the numbers they used were completely different from those of the Indians. They used letters to notate numbers. This is the number 1612. A different letter was used to notate each different unit. But here at the end of the 10th century, no one seemed to mind. The people here still did not know about zero. This young monk feels guilty. But he can't help his profound interest in Islamic science and culture. Every night, he pours over mysterious texts given to him by Arabian merchants. Among them is a book written by an Indian mathematician and translated by Arabians. The letters look very strange. They're the nine numbers and zero that we've come to call Arabic numerals. Later on, Gerbert of Aurillac, who was so engrossed in the science and culture of the heathens, would become the 139th Pope.
This is the oldest cathedral in Rome. To Catholics, this church is venerated as the mother of all the cathedrals around the world. It is full of images of the saints who protected the church and its theology. The reason it took so long for Zero to take root in the West was because Christian theology did not recognize the concept of nothingness. In one corner of the church lies Gerbert of Aurillac, who was later on known as Pope Sylvester II. His tenure was plagued by scandals because of his fondness for Arabic numerals. Even after his death, people wanted to dig up his tomb because of the controversies. After Sylvester II died, um, there were all sorts of rumors of his consorting with demons and being this infernal pope that uh, uh, was somehow under the influence of Satan. And I think that uh, the, the idea of uh, Arabic numerals fell into that. The idea that um, these strange symbols were probably handed down by Satan. So there was a, a huge religious resistance uh, to all of this knowledge uh, that could have advanced the West much earlier than it actually did. Gerbert used Arabic numerals in order to create an abacus. The abacuses of the time were extremely difficult to use. And they were not very popular at all. The abacuses were used in the following manner. Let's notate 984. The number for each unit was notated with the same number of stones. But only one stone had to be used with Arabic numerals. This was much more convenient. But that was all for the use of Arabic numerals and zero. Maybe it was due to the religious resistance, but Gerbert did nothing further with Arabic numerals. People love the Leaning Tower of Pisa. While this is the city's most famous attraction, there was a time when Pisa was a rich commercial hub. In the 13th century, a person in this city took an interest in Arabic numerals. His name was Leonardo Fibonacci. Because Pisa was near a trade route on the sea, it acted as a hub of transportation from early on. North Africa can be reached after a two to three day journey on this sea. Fibonacci traveled with his merchant father from very early on. North Africa. While the climate here is similar to Pisa's, the people are very different.
most of the people here are Muslims. This was also true during Fibonacci's time. They used zero and Arabic numerals. But they were not accepted overnight. <laughs> They were getting along fine with Roman numerals. Calculation was possible. It was easy to add with Roman numerals. 777 plus 216. All you had to do was put the letters together. Subtraction was also easy. There was no reason to accept something new. But in the eyes of a merchant who had a knack for numbers, Arabic numerals presented a new opportunity. That person was Fibonacci. He realized that there was something that Arabic numerals could do that their Roman counterparts couldn't. He decided to spread Arabic numerals far and wide. This is an 800-year-old book. Liber Abbasi. It was a book about arithmetic. Arabic numerals appear after a single turn of the page. There are the numbers 1 through 9 and also 0. These numbers made it possible to notate any number no matter how big it was and there was no reason to devise new letters. There are arithmetic problems as well. Unlike with Roman numerals, complex calculations could be performed quickly and precisely. It was a mathematical revolution. Liber Abbasi spread slowly throughout Europe. This was because printing was still in its infancy, and the book itself was extremely difficult. The oldest bank in the world is located in the heart of Siena. People in this bank also began to use Arabic numerals. They made even complex calculations easy. But they were forbidden by the government of Florence. Thus began the struggle between abacuses and Arabic numerals. At the time, abacuses could only be used by experts. The intellectuals of the time sought to stem the tide of Arabic numerals. The merchants all wanted to use them and uh, once there was money behind it, it was really hard to stop it from spreading. And so once the merchants started using Arabic numerals, it spread um, north through Germany and out through the rest of Europe, and it completely replaced Roman numeration within a few centuries. The struggle between the abacus and Arabic numerals rose to a climax. That climax is recorded in this book.
This book was used as a textbook in 16th century Germany. C'est une encyclopédie à l'usage des étudiants qui résume toute la connaissance que l'on doit acquérir au cours des études. It consists of 12 chapters with almost all of the chapters containing an illustration. Carmenta, the goddess who is said to have invented the alphabet, guides the students on their journey of learning. This is the scene that contains the struggle between the abacus and Arabic numerals. Les chiffres romains. Mais ça fait rien. Au Moyen Âge, on, a ces, on imagine ces deux mathématiciens qui incarnent chacun un système euh, numérique. Et euh, le, il y a débat on, en Europe à ce moment-là sur savoir quel est le système le plus efficace. Est-ce qu'il vaut mieux compter? This person represents the abacus and the status quo that had existed for over 500 years. This person represents the rising new tide of people who calculate using only a piece of paper and Arabic numerals. The man using the abacus uses stones in order to calculate and writes the answer using Roman numerals. So, how does he calculate? Fifty-eight times one hundred twenty-three. First, he notates fifty-eight. One stone for fifty. Another for five and another three to indicate the number three. He multiplies this by a hundred, times 10, times a hundred. Then he multiplies 58 by 20. First he multiplies it by 10, and then by two. Then he multiplies it by three. That concludes the calculation. The answer is 7,134, which is written using Roman numerals. His Arabic numeral using counterpart calculates in the following manner. 58 multiplied by 123. First, he multiplies 8 times 3, which equals 24. Then he keeps the 2 and writes down the 4. Next, he multiplies the 8 with the 2 and 5 with 3. 8 times 2 equals 16. 5 times 3 equals 15. Then he adds the 2 from the former calculation, which results in 33. He keeps 3 and writes down the other 3. He continues in this manner until the calculation is complete. The answer is 7,134. Multiplication was performed differently back then, so both the abacus and Arabic numerals representatives calculated at similar speeds. But history declared Arabic numerals the winner. What was the reason for this? Uh, the Arabic numerals, once you know how to use them, are much more efficient than the old style of numeration through Roman numerals. To do a calculation with Roman numerals, you used to have to do a translation. You used to take the Roman numerals and then 
use uh, stones or beads on a counting board, do your calculations, and then put it back in, uh, into Roman numerals. And people did that for many, many years. But once the um, merchants started learning about these Arabic numerals where you could actually do the calculations on paper without moving stones about and do them much more efficiently, It took a whopping 800 years for Arabic numerals to take root in Europe. And it was only with the advent of the printing press that those less privileged became familiar with them. This process was further helped by the cheapening of paper. Mathematics finally became accessible to the everyman. یک، دو، سه، چهار، پنج، شش، هفت گلی، فیلا، سبا، نانی پنج، چه، سار، آنک شیب، شیبی، شیبی Although we call them by different names, now everyone uses Arabic numerals. We make the same calculations using different languages. This was only made possible through mathematics. It did not happen overnight. It took generations of trailblazers to bring numbers to the common people of the world. Ocho, nueve, quinze, seize, twenty-two. Where will numbers lead us next? Yara, seize, Zilio, quatorze, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, hundred. Shiata Gretel, both Hayata, Tetema, Asmin, Havia, Juhotana, Sushamita, Yasho, GK, Gretanti, Paran, Juhotana, Aganaye, Jata, Veda, Setan, Tava, Samit, Pirangiro, Grete, Napargaya, Masi, Puriacho, Taja, Vestia. Patavagane, Havikamati, Kireta, Jeev, Jantu, Arjata, Jogasavasa, Mido, Mama, Borbu, Aha, Swalja Uriva, Pretevi, Swalja Uriva, Bumana, Pretevi, Vaparimana, Tasiaste, Pretevi, Deva, Yajani, Pristegni, Manna, Tamanna, Yaya, Dade, Aya. Krami Dasadan Mataram Puraha Vita Ranjaparayan Swahari Om Maha.